Two sex. Two sex. No problem. Can we just start with your your engine problems? Obviously, we know about Carol and Abby. She had a serious eye. Yeah, they're not serious at all. Uh, Andy unfortunately picked up a groin strain um, last Saturday, and Fab Shears had a a bit of a sore knee, which which he's been playing with for the last two three weeks, and uh, last Saturday become too uncomfortable for him. So. Um, They'll both miss tomorrow. They could be in contention for next week. We expect them not to be long term, so which is good news. Yeah, I guess the biggest blow in all of that is you were looking like almost having a, a full squad. Yeah, I mean, look, it's look here. I mean, listen, it is part and parcel of football. That's why we have the squads we have, especially in today's game as well. You know, yeah, they're going to pick up injuries, part and parcel of it. Of course, just when you think you had a clean bill of health, and you pick up a couple. But the good news is that uh, flows close to a return, and so is uh, so is Matt Ritchie and all. So uh, he's bounced around the training ground all week. So uh, good to see him back and all. I guess with Andy Carroll, you always worry it could be worse due to injury risk. But we, you yeah, yeah. I mean, look, it's it's not his ankle. Thankfully, it's not his ankle. So look, everybody can pick up. Everybody can pick up those type of niggles, especially you know when you're sitting on a bench for for a while and he's come off and stretched for one and over stretched. It's one of them things, you know. It's um, it's fortunate, as I said, that his ankle is good and the way we're managing his ankle is good news. So uh, it's disappointing and disappointing for. There's nobody more disappointed than Andy, of course. But uh, look at these things happen. I'm guessing that he was close to being in the position for a start as well. Given that well, he was getting himself into a position where the more he trained and the more he, he had the, you know, he's, he came on for half an hour against Man U and and the 25 minutes against Chelsea. So he's, he was manoeuvring into position where, of course, to start. Look, it's not to be. It's uh, disappointing for everybody, but we have to carry on. And what you do have with, with Fabian Scherringer is you've got good options at the back, really. Yeah, I mean, that's the one area of the pitch where, you know, we've we've got six centre-backs, so if you include Dummy as a centre-back, so in that respect, in that respect, we've got a lot of cover, um, which always is, which is always a sandy. Um, some better news for you this week with Martin Dubravka signing his long-term deal. How, how key was it for you to get him tied down when you arrived here? Well, I mean, the, you know, when we've we've been speaking with uh, with Lee now for the last few weeks on on the squad and and where we see it fit and uh, obviously Martin and I know Lee's in discussions with two, three others too so that can only be a good thing we want to tie down with good players Martin's had a, a wonderful few months since he's been at the club and has been rewarded so um, in that respect we're all delighted He was pretty much plucked from nowhere under the previous yeah. a lot of people hadn't heard of him before how impressed have you been with Yeah him? I mean look I can only look from afar in the three months that I've, that I've been working with him he's a very very good a goalkeeper so you know we, we've won an earth one because you're right not a lot of people had heard of him and it's essential for any big club and if you're going to do anything you need a good goalkeeper that is the number one position um, for a lot of people so uh, we're, we're delighted that he's tied himself up to the club Can I just check on something you, you, you touched on just a moment ago I know I asked you last week about the long staffs particularly Matthias' contract I think you said you're hoping to start Well they do the, the two of them um, I think uh, Lee obviously Lee um, is in discussions with I think they've got the same agent so they're discussions with the agents but these things don't take yeah. one day anymore. I think with Martin, it's took the best part of two and a half months. Yeah. So I'm quietly confident we'll get there. You know, with the two young lads who, who obviously have got a big, big future, and we want to try them up, as, tie them up as best we can. Now, what you have done the last few weeks is, I think you can say it yourself, gone back to basics. What the players know best. Hmm. It certainly looked pretty tight at the back, but yeah, still struggling. <coughs> yeah, yeah. Yeah. Between there. yeah, that is the concern. Although we have played five of the top six, and yeah. if you include Leicester in there, we've played um, them as well. You know, so it's um, it, it's never going to be easy in that respect. And I think with the likes of. Um, Certainly, Joe and St. Maxim. The more they play, St. 
maximum he played the last couple of games in, in that respect. So it's one area where we have to improve. We are aware of that. However, what we can do is keep working on the training ground and it is the hardest part of the game and, uh, and hope we think we've got enough firepower up there we need to start showing that and scoring more because that is the one area where we, we need to do better so that's what we've been working on all week and continue to do so but it's easy on the training ground easy on the training ground not so, not so easy on a Saturday Do you worry at all about Joel in terms of he obviously brings a lot to the team but do you worry about his confidence along the goes on? No, I mean he, listen, he's you know, he's only young, he was only twenty three a month ago, you know, so he needs time to settle and how many times do you see it? How many times even when you pay a sixty, seventy, eighty million pounds, Pepe scores last night for the first time. It takes a little bit of time to adjust. Joe will be a fine player for this club. I'm absolutely convinced about that. We need to reassure him that he's a good player. And of course, with any striker, and it's the same with little Almiron too, with any striker, the breed a little bit of confidence of a goal. And um, let's hope this weekend is, is their turn. So are you confident then that their spirits are still up despite the Yeah, spirit? well, they, they, certainly, they certainly look at and training and the way they, they go about their work. And uh, and as I said, I'm quietly confident that they'll that they'll manage to turn around the decent performances that they're putting in, um, topping it off by scoring a goal. And just finally, um, obviously, Wolves are pretty tough team. They have yeah, good the side. Couple of years. Good they side. Last night, I think, and it looked like they're fairly. Really strong side yeah, yeah. I mean, I think they've played the strong side since they've gone into Europe. I think they've made it a, a priority, and I can only be quietly impressed of what they've done. I mean, they romped the championship a couple of years ago, but they finished seventh in the Premier League last year. is a is a wonderful return. And the one thing that I've got is they've got good players. They've got good players and played in a certain system, a bit similar to ours. And um, but do it very very well so they're a threat they're a good good side um, I think they've already played 17-18 games this year and only lost a few of those so they're a good side Cheers Steve Cheers Can you take advantage of that some teams have had a bit of a European hangover after these sort of midweek away games Well I think that's um, I think that's always a difficulty of it we experienced it a few years ago at Hull it is mightily difficult to um to get that mindset of playing Thursday because always you play on a Sunday. Um, so, you know, the big teams who are used to it are used to playing repeatedly in Europe, you know, they become accustomed to it, but it can be difficult. I hope we can benefit from it. Um, let's hope they're really tired and bruised and battered and, <laughs> and, uh, and the plane's been delayed five hours. But, uh, but look, I think uh, they're a very, very good side. So if we can, if they hopefully are a bit fatigued, then hopefully we can take advantage of it. One thing about Wolves and what the managers instilled in them, they don't seem to fear anybody, do they? No, they've... Well, they were, they were excellent, arguably as good a championship team as I've ever seen. I mean, they had three or four players who were, you know, shouldn't be playing in the championship back in a couple of years ago. So they've they've done remarkably well in a short period of time, and of course, I think they finished seventh in the Premier League last year, and continued it on this year. You know, qualified for Europe, so they're a very good side with with very very good very very good players. It may be something the fans look at more than than, than you do, but being in the bottom three is, is there a psychologi psychological factor? Ah, well, nobody wants to be there, but I was always aware that the start we had was going to be. Um, was going to be difficult as I said playing five out of the top six and if you put Leicester in there as well then it has been a difficult start in that respect so I think three points separates 10-11 teams so let's hope we can go and now start by getting a victory this weekend and uh, and pushing ourselves up the other end of the table the, and these are the sort of home games that I suppose well, they're all crucial. I mean, look, it's accumulation of points. I always think it's accumulation of points. And, but we're at home against um, against a very decent Wolves side. But um, we're capable. We know that. We've got to play our best again to win. That's for sure. But we're quietly confident that we can do it. January is fast looming. And we've seen, obviously, with, with Andy having a, a new problem. And then that kind of leaves you up quite short up front again. I mean, that's Well, no, we've got Dwight Gale. We've got Dwight Gale back. So I've always liked... Dwight Gale I've always thought he's been a very very good player as I said many times I've tried to buy him three times I think and never been able to do it so um, in that respect 
look, everybody picks up injuries. It's part and parcel. But the one thing you can't do is just keep collecting players. So we look at January and and the, 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 and see what we need then. But, but as I've said repeatedly, January is a difficult month. So um, you know, well, let's concentrate on what we've got and what we can do with the squad at the minute, and uh, see what we can do in January. Steve at ITV, uh, you know, you've played a uh, really top flight like, few sides the last few games. Uh, how realistic is some of the kind of fans' calls for a kind of return to that swashbuckling footballing style of the 90s? <laughs> well, look. I mean, the swashbuckling team of the 90s was was a wonderfully gifted team and you have to have certain individuals to play that way. So I don't think we'd be quite that just yet. That might be the aim, of course. Yeah, you've got to keep aiming that high, I suppose. But they were a, they were a great side and a great side to watch. But uh, I don't think we'll be returning to that very shortly. That's for sure. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. Cheers. Thank you. Thanks. Is that, is that, there's no other injuries. Just us. Just us. Just, 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 just two. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you.